This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Let's just go through and have a look at another brief accounting standard, uh, IS8. Uh, IS8 goes through there and covers three areas. Uh, what you've got there is it looks, first of all, at your accounting policy. So we have all of these, if you like, accounting rules uh, that we have. Uh, how do we know that we are applying the correct accounting rules to the, the correct transaction? Uh, we also go through there and look at your accounting estimate. So what constitutes an accounting estimate? Uh, and then what we do there is we combine the first policy and the second estimate with what happens then if we change the policy or if we change the estimates. OK, and then third and finally, we look at what happens if you have made an error within the financial statements, how do we go through there and subsequently correct that accounting error with the numbers having been incorrectly reported in previous accounting periods? There's not a lot to it. Again, you may get one question or two within the exam. OK, so uh, first of all, it goes through there and gives you a definition of what an accounting policy is. Uh, it talks about the specific principles. I think that's the main bit to think about the specific principles. Remember, everything is underpinned by the conceptual framework, isn't it? That gives you the, the general principles with regards to the underlying assumptions, the fundamental qualitative characteristics and the enhancing qualitative characteristics and the definitions of assets, liabilities, income, expense, equity and looks at how we then recognise them with regards to being probable and measure reliably. This is being more specific. OK, so when we've looked previously at IES 16, it's told us the specific measurement basis to go through there and measure the asset at cost. It's given a specific measurement basis with regards to how to go through there and depreciate the asset. It's gone through there and given us some specifics with regards to how we revalue the asset. OK, so you've got the framework that sits at the top uh, and then you've got, if you like, all the specific rules within each accounting standard, which is, if you like, then the accounting policy. OK, uh, in terms of how we go through that and select the accounting policy. Uh, well, it's logic, isn't it, really? First of all, you choose the standard that specifically deals with the transaction. So if you have property, plant and equipment, I think you would start off there with IS16, isn't it? So if you have land and buildings that are there as part of your normal day-to-day -day operations that you use maybe for a factory, for a warehouse, for your head office, then that's IS16. However, if you have land and buildings that's there for maybe investment purposes i.e capital appreciation or to rent out to other parties then it's not is 16 is it but it's there as is 40 okay so you need to be specific about which standard follows which accounting treatments okay uh, if there is no specific standard which like we said in the framework chapter it is very very rare what you should do however is select the policy that gives relevant and reliable information. OK, remember, we've seen the word relevant in the framework as part of one of the qualitative final fundamental qualitative characteristics. And if things are reliable, aren't they? If we focus upon the substance and the economic reality as part of your faithful representation, isn't it? So even IS8 is taking the specifics uh, and applying them to the, to the general standard that we have with regards to the framework, don't we? OK, it's specifically telling you how to select an accounting policy using the principles from the framework to help you. OK, so what you should do there is you should take a, a similar item in terms of a framework. And if there is no accounting standard for a similar item, then go back to the framework definitions. OK, was it there? Free roam that we had to make sure that everything is consistent. OK, uh, if you have then a change in the accounting policy, it could be because of a new IFRS. So we have recently seen new IFRS is launched, IFRS 15 with regards to revenue and IFRS 16 with regards to leases. OK, uh, if that's the case, then you just follow the treatment 
that you have in the new IFRS. That will have, if you like, all the implementation guidance about how you go through and change to your new IFRS and how you can then deal with the comparatives in the prior period. Okay. However, it may be that what you have there is a voluntary change. And the reason why it is voluntary is because you believe that the new policy gives you more relevant and reliable information. Okay. If that's the case, what you do is you apply what is known as retrospective application. So what you go through and do there is you restate the prior year figures as if you had always had the accounting policy. So that will mean that the asset, the liability may go up or down. And then what you do there is that that increase in the asset will give you a corresponding credit entry through profit or loss. You will adjust your brought forward figures. So if you like your retained earnings and you will do that within the statement of changes in equity. OK, so you will restate the prior year comparatives. And then that movement in the prior year figure goes into your opening retained earnings within the statement of changes in equity. OK, again, if you're applying a change in your accounting policy. Uh, change in accounting policies come about from either a change. In how you measure something, so maybe you've changed from FIFO to weighted average with regard to your inventory valuation. It could be as well that you also have a change in your recognition. So you've changed, if you like, the way that you recognise the costs with regards to the assets. That is a change in your accounting policy. OK, so in the old days when we had, if you like, the standard on borrowing costs that allowed you the choice of capitalising the interest on borrowing costs or expensing the interest of your borrowing costs. Then if you change from capitalising to expensing or vice versa, expensing to capitalising, then that was a change in the recognition. OK, uh, in terms of the amounts that you have. Also, as well, what you also need to consider. Is, is there a change in the presentation? So did you previously present an expense in cost of sales and now present it in admin or distribution? Or did you previously present it in admin or distribution and now it's there within cost of sales? So when you apply retrospective application, you restate the comparative. But in that instance, with a change in presentation, there will be no adjustment to the retained earnings, would there? Because you're just moving an expense within your profit or loss account, you're not changing the, the overall bottom figure with regards to your profits, are we? OK, just be careful uh, if you change from your depreciation from straight line to reducing balance. That is not, I repeat, not a change in accounting policy. Your policy is to depreciate. OK, you're just going through there and changing how you estimate that depreciation. OK. Uh, we then have your change in accounting estimates. Uh, changes in your accounting estimates are recognised prospectively. So we don't go back and restate the comparatives. We don't go back and restate the opening retained earnings in your statement of change in equity. If there is a change in estimates, then you have the you update it in the period of change or the period of change and future periods. So like we've seen with regards to our depreciation, if you change straight line to reducing balance, you take the carrying value at the date of change and apply the new estimate, don't you? Uh, and you apply that new estimate this year and into future periods. You do not restate anything from prior year periods. OK, excellent. So the example that you've got there, accounting estimates, I think we've gone through and covered it already. But would the following be a change in accounting policy or a change in an estimate? So remember, a change in accounting policy is where we look at the change in measurement, look at the change in how we recognise it or how we go through there and change, if you like, the presentation. So the first one, if a company decides its method or to change its method of depreciation from straight line to reducing balance, remember, 
that is not a change in accounting policy. It is a change in accounting estimate. The policy is to depreciate. OK, we're not changing the presentation. We're not changing the recognition. The measurement is still the same because we're still measuring the full cost of the asset through profit or loss. We're just estimating a different way of showing it. OK, whereby the second one, if a company decides to change from capitalizing to write off of your finance costs, again, that wouldn't be available anymore. But OK, that's your policy, a change in accounting policy. I suppose it would if previously you've not adopted IFRS and always wrote off your finance costs under IFRS. Now you must capitalize. OK, excellent. Uh, last little bit on this brief, short, fairly good session uh, is looking at prior period errors. So errors occur from either emissions. So you fail to record an entry or misstatement. So coming about there from, if you like, the wrong number uh, that you've gone through and processed. So they come around there, does it say, from applying accounting policies. So you may have applied a policy incorrectly. So you have misstated the financial statements. Again, an oversight, you may have missed something out and therefore there is an omission or is the fraud and any potential impacts of fraud. They are all considered as errors. OK, errors, we are only going to go through there and correct if they are material. If they're immaterial, that is not, if you like, relevant, is it? So we're not too worried. Key bit is that we go back and adjust it retrospectively. So that is exactly the same as if we have a change in accounting policy, i.e. you update last year's comparatives to correct the error and then the correction of the error, whether it increases or decreases the assets or the liabilities, gives you a debit or then a credit entry that then appears within your opening retained earnings balance that is adjusted for the statements of changes in equity. OK, there you have it. There isn't much else. If you like, again, you may get one, two questions maximum within the exam, I would have thought, potentially.